All right, guys, this water looks really good. There's even surfers out, out there at the point, but that doesn't deter me because the rest of this bay is so flat and so nice. So I'm gonna gear up and get out there. I don't have any specific fish that I plan on targeting today. So that's always fun. Whatever kind of swims out in front of me is what I'll go for and uh, cook up for dinner. So I'm gonna gear up. We can always stay a little longer. We don't have a plan. Just let me live a little younger than I really am. I could tell right away it was gonna be an awesome day out here in the water. You know, octopus are on the food chain for a ton of different predatory fish. So when I let this octopus go out here in the open water, he put on a super cool display of evasive maneuvers here and immediately started making his way back to the reef where he can then, you know, camouflage or go hide in a hole or something like that. You know, but if a jack like a bluefin trevally came swimming by right now, he would totally crush this octopus because uh, they love to eat octopus and squid. Octopus actually have three hearts. But do you guys know what color the octopus's blood is? They actually have blue colored blood, which is really cool. While octopus camouflage themselves to avoid being caught, puffer fish just puff themselves all up like this, almost like a beach ball, and stick out all these spines. And the spines on puffer fish can actually be pretty poisonous. So I was trying to avoid getting poked here. The moment I let him go, you'll see that he deflates really quickly. This is a small white tip reef shark and I think he was only about three feet long. Normally, almost all types of sharks need to swim continuously in order to keep water moving through their gills and that allows them to breathe. But small reef sharks like this one can actually just pump their own water through the gills. And so they can just like lay in a cave and sleep like this and not have to move. I usually find them sleeping in the daytime in like a nice cave or in a hole like this, probably saving their energy to go hunting during the night. For the most part, I find these sharks super non-aggressive and they're typically small. Like I don't think they get larger than about five and a half feet. And I've heard that like they don't get heavier than 40 pounds. The colors on this crocodile needlefish in person were crazy. The blue and the silver colors reminded me a bit of like a bluefin trevally. I think this is just such a cool looking fish. Like I've never eaten one of these before. So today I'm gonna do a catch and cook with this one and see how it tastes. Crocodile needlefish can swim almost 40 miles an hour, which is so fast. And they've been known to actually use their sharp needle-like beak to stab divers. In fact, at least two people have been killed by needlefish. So I personally sort of consider these fish almost more dangerous than those white tip reef shark that you just saw, especially at nighttime when most needlefish attacks have happened. I really let this fish get tired out before diving down and grabbing it, as I just didn't really want it to poke me at all or, or try to spear me with its beak. Won't let you touch me, won't let you go to my head, cause I know I'm dealing with the devil, but I'm standing with my heart in your head. 
I use a pretty small like 90 to 100 centimeter spear gun when I fish the near shore reefs. And the spear gun that I'm using here is called the Omer Invictus. If you're into fishing, you're probably familiar with brands like Shimano and Daiwa and Pan and others. But even like the biggest spear fishing brands are far less known to people. And they have names like Rife or Omer, Beauchat and others. The Hawaiian green sea turtles are the largest type of sea turtle with a hard shell in the whole world. And they can get huge, they can, they can get over four feet long and I've heard that they can get over 300 pounds. And I believe it because I've seen some huge ones out there, especially kind of further out or in places not many people dive. Like you'll just be swimming along and out comes this like prehistoric looking monstrous turtle out of nowhere and they can look like a small car. And can you guess the lifespan of a Hawaiian green sea turtle? Believe it or not, they live between 80 and 100 years. Isn't that crazy? That means like when you're swimming with a sea turtle in Hawaii, that turtle was around before NASA went to the moon or like before World War II. Like that's so weird. Like the turtle might have been swimming here 100 years ago. So this right here is a crocodile needlefish. And I can tell it probably got the name because this crazy beak on the front of it with all these teeth. Some people also call them a houndfish. They have a really cool blue color on the back and silver on the bottom. And the flesh is actually supposed to have a green tint to it. So I'm interested to see how it tastes and I'm gonna get cooking here. Hey everyone, I'm gonna do a quick giveaway today. I'm gonna to give away 10 of these Fresnel lenses. Now these lenses just fit inside your wallet and you can take them with you camping, fishing, whatever, and they can start a fire for you super easily. They focus the sunlight into a tiny little beam and you don't even need a lot of sunlight surprisingly. And they're super hyper magnified piece of glass basically that helps start it. For your chance to win one of these Fresnel lenses, guys, place a comment on this video and that's it. You can just say hi, you can tell me what you like about the video, what you don't like, you can tell me the weirdest fish that you've ever caught. Just comment on the video, that's it, and you'll be entered to win one of these 10 super cool fire starting lenses. So I just decided the gut cavity on this thing is so long that I'm actually gonna try putting inside it some lemon, some ginger, fresh ginger, and some lemongrass, just to see if it helps the flavor at all. I find banana leaves do a really good job on keeping in the, the heat when I'm cooking and they don't really catch on fire and burn up. I 
I soaked all these wood steaks that I was using to cook with in water so that they wouldn't catch on fire, but sure enough, they're all catching on fire. So I just switched out the wood steaks for like my grills on my actual barbecue, like the grill plates. And I think this is working a lot better. All right guys, I think this fish is done. Switching over to the grill concept, I think was a good idea. It is still really, really hot. The uh, coals were definitely hot enough to cook through the fish. I wasn't sure at first, but definitely was. I poured a little bit of sesame seed oil on top as you saw. And I'm just hoping that adds some flavor to this because otherwise I didn't really season it with salt and pepper and things like that. So let's see how it tastes. Wow, you can actually see the green, like they said, the green flesh. There's actually green in the bones right here. It's pretty cool. It reminds me a little bit of barracuda meat, sort of the color, the dark meat in here. Let's try it out. You know, that tastes really good. There's nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't say that the fish has a super distinct taste. I find barracuda is like almost a little bit sweeter. You know, I even really like the way the, uh, the skin caramelized up with the sesame oil on it and the fire. Created a really good sort of caramelization taste. Overall guys, really good cook today with a really cool fish. Thanks so much for watching another episode of Awesome Blue. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons if you want to see more. And I'll see you on the next one. If you like watching Awesome Blue, hit subscribe and thumbs up too. Exploring the ocean, swimming with sharks, shooting big fish, hit it right on the mark. Share channel with your friends, watch every video till the end. Our passion spending time. Watch a video, let's play Chanel, how this awesome